G'day friends and welcome back to Tonto's Domain. Wanted to take the opportunity today to have a little bit of discussion about the recent draft box, draft box number five, Divine Multiverse, and kind of the collectability of the draft boxes. So previously, we used to get theme sets. Theme set number one, Tournament of Power, was very iconic, probably one of the most iconic releases we've gotten so far in the Dragon Ball Super Card game. Everyone loved it, signature cards, Victory Strike, Sun Goku, Secret Rare, everyone was having a good time with Tournament of Power. Then came along theme set number two, a World Martial Arts Tournament, and it ruined the party for everyone. Personally, I really, really like theme set number two. I probably like it as much as Tournament of Power. However, it just had no value. Like in the current climate, in the current world, your toilet paper is probably harder to find than World Martial Arts Tournament. I know I can go to any local game store and see World Martial Arts Tournament. I can't say I can go to any local super, um, supermarket and find toilet paper. So, World Martial Arts Tournament, really nice kind of combined shared artwork with those partner cards. Some really awesome special rares, like a small little set, but it was very nice. Then we got set number three, Clash of Fates, which after some of our recent openings, I must say I'm a big fan of Clash of Fates. I thought it was really cool. And I really liked how they were like having small little releases every now and then themed to something different from the Dragon Ball Super or Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball just experience overall. Now, in recent sets, they cut out the theme sets and they've been replacing them with draft boxes. Now, draft boxes, as you can see in the background there, you've got your four copies of the Zeno Leader card. They're designed for the drafting experience with your mates. They once again come in 24 booster packs. And if you get a draft box, you can split six of these packs with a mate, get four of you together, have the same leader card, and just with what cards you get, put together some decks and see what you can do with them and have some fun. So that is kind of the draft box experience. However, in saying that, originally I thought there was not much collectability at all to these cards because they are designed primarily for the playability compared to some of the other things. Whereas you look at a theme set which has a theme to it, something you can collect, I thought, oh, so they've kind of gone away from that not going to collect these cards. But there's been lots of upsides to it as well. Now, one of the things with it is the value to the draft box cards is nuts. Just absolutely insane. So the highest rarity in these draft boxes is going to be kind of the campaign rare. So you can see in the middle there, you've got your destroyer and your angel rare. And then in draft box four for the dragon brawl, it was the duo powered rare, I believe it was. So you get three a box, you get three in every 24 booster packs. They're quite hard to find. Some of those, some of the duo power rares, like the sun go hunts and stuff, are going for a hundred Australian dollars at the moment. Like the values have crept up a lot. However, because that is the highest rarity, and then you've got your super rares. Really, your super rares are actually the highest end card which you can pull. And what that does is, because you get a lot more super rares, is the values being the rarest card you can get is very high, and you get a lot more of them, so you actually get a lot of valuable cards in those, and lots of people don't go and get these draft boxes, which means they're kind of a limited supply in the secondary market. You're not going to have so many people who have these cards who are selling them or trading them off, which means they are harder to find unless you go and get the draft box yourself. And they're also a little bit more expensive as a product. So this means there's lots of cards in it which are really expensive, even some rares. There's some rares where there was the Great Ape Goku from the Dragon Ball draft box, which crept up to 100 Australian dollars as well, and it's just a rare. Same with some of these super rares. Lots and lots of value to it, which is very, very interesting. However, one thing Bandai has been doing with these draft boxes is when, they've been the, when there has been those cards which have crept up massively in value, they've been hit with a reprint very, very early because quite often you wait like a year or two before you see reprints. Some of these have come within like a 9 to 12 month tw um, time frame, which is a very quick turnaround. So lots of these cards which creep up in value may not have that long-term value. So if you're collecting and you want to dump a lot of money and getting these $100 rares or something like that, which might then go to $10, makes you a little bit nervous as a collector. You don't want to spend a lot of money on a collection which is just going to have no long-term value to it. But then again, there are other ways to go about collecting these draft boxes. So when we look at the recent set where there was these 12 like destroyer and angel rares, so we'll take a look at a couple more of them. 
They're very, very cool, very nice artwork. Something unique and something different to what we've got. Looking at these, because there's the 12 universes, you can just try to collect these 12 cards and being like three of these per box, it actually makes a reasonable collectible target. And I've spoken to a couple of people who are actually from this recent draft box, just trying to collect these 12 Destroyer and Angel cards and just trying to even get them graded and see if they can get the 12 cards in PSA 10, which makes a nice little challenge there and it has a nice bit of collectability to it. So originally when I looked at this set and thought, oh, whoa, this is just not a collectible at all. It's actually a lot of elements which are really interesting where they cater to both sides. You've got the drafting experience, you've got the collectible experience, and it's a really nice, interesting blend of the two. Now with it as well, this is a lot bigger release than what we're getting in the theme sets. And you can actually compare this set in a sense to the Tournament of Power. The Tournament of Power set was about 60, 70 cards, I believe, and then you add in your specials and secrets, where you looked at lots of characters from the Tournament of Power. However, this set does the same thing. It's called Divine Multiverse, except you've got like 130 or something like commons, uncommon, super rares. You've got a much larger pool. You're focusing on more moments from the show. You're focusing on more characters and you've got a bigger variety there. And originally I was like, why would you want to collect something called just the draft box? That's pretty boring, but it's draft box five, Divine Multiverse. And when I started thinking of it in that sense, like thinking, oh, it's the Divine Multiverse set instead of it's the Draft Box set, it's like, oh, well, you can actually put these cards in a binder, just get like the complete commons, uncommons, etc., rares, etc., and put them together and be like, this is my Divine Multiverse collection. But the hesitation in that is what we talked about before. Like, you have lots of these super rare cards, and if you're going to dump money on getting all of these super rare cards, it ends up being the same as getting like the total of secret rares, like the three secret rares from Universal Onslaught and then getting all 24 super rares from Divine Multiverse. You're probably looking at a similar value. However, those three secret rares, very, very unlikely to get reprinted or at least very unlikely to get reprinted anytime soon. And then you compare with these super rares where they're very likely to get reprinted if they go up in price because they're very hard to get and they might not retain their price because a lot of their price comes on the playability and not the collectability. So it is a lot riskier in terms of if you're going to invest or try to collect that set, the value that it's going to retain. So that's one of the really big problems with it. Like in a sense, the set itself would be a very good collectible. And maybe in a few years, maybe when all those cards have been reprinted, maybe when the super rare value of the set has flattened out a lot, then you can just jump into this and you can go, okay, I've got my Divine Multiverse collection. But until then, I would be very, very cautious about doing so because you're going to be hit with those reprints. The set, it's a lot of fun. Divine Multiverse, it was fantastic kind of theme to it. There was beautiful cards you can see here. Even got like this Rebrian, random Rebrian here. Nobody likes Rebrian apart from me. It's just one of the most hated characters, but just beautiful artwork. And it's a super rare card as well. And lots of the super rares just had such nice artwork, almost comparable to like the special rares in some other sets as well. So you've got lots of great cards. You've got everything that you'd want in a collectible. You've just got that very, very high amount of risk to it. And it seems they're going to be continuing with this draft box theme. There's draft box six announced. I believe it's like I can't remember if it's September or October, it might even be earlier than that, it might be August. Sometime in the next few months, we'll just play it general, we'll play it safe there. So they're going to keep on going with these draft boxes, but I'm kind of growing more interested in seeing what they do with them, because I believe they have a very good potential of balancing the playability and the collectability of the cards, and hopefully they can kind of go with that and find a nice balance between the two. The really interesting thing is just... With lots of these super rare cards that come out, they're meant to be very important for a lot of decks and they're very sought after. When you go and open these booster boxes at the moment, you don't just want to have this $100 card which you have there and it's like, oh, I'm going to put that in a folder or I'm going to sell it now, get my $100 and then buy it in a year's time when it's worth 10 or something. So the, the 
Draft boxes have a lot of value to them in the sealed product, especially to open. They're a lot of fun to open, but keep in mind and just be careful if you do collect it. There are ways to collect it. You might just go in the commons and uncommons where it's cheap and you can get lots of those characters a moment. You might pick something like just getting these 12 Destroy and Angel Rares where the value is pretty maintained and I believe will probably remain pretty consistent moving forward. But then, yeah, before with the duo powered rares and stuff, like some of them are very playable even now. So there's some which are ridiculously expensive, some which are cheap. So just keep in mind that variability in price there. But other than that, just thought I'd have a little bit of a chat about kind of the draft boxes, a little bit of the collector's kind of perspective on it, and then just looking at what's going to happen moving forward with them. So I hope you found this interesting. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know what you think about the kind of draft boxes at the moment and what's going on. But other than that, thanks for watching. Hope you're taking care and I hope to see you next time here at Dante's Domain. Farewell.